the video the video you're about to see or are looking at right now is not exactly what it appears to be uh, this is where the church tries to smooth out uh, or push under the carpet their history of what the church how the church started and the little things that polygamy is a taboo subject in today's society and yes the, if you are going to the Mormon church at the largest sect of the Mormon church, which would be the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they do not practice polygamy at this time. There are offsets right now, uh, little sects of uh, Mormon church that uh, the, the Mormons disassociate themselves with, probably for a good reason, because if they did not do that it would put the church in a bad light okay so it's like oh it, it, it's like it's kind of like um christians separating themselves from uh the fundamental fundamentalist christians okay we 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 like it this way and you guys are are we don't we you're here we rather pretend that you're not that makes any sense at all. anyhow let's watch this mormon video about what mormons think about polygamy and i'm going to comment and probably criticize the little things that they try to sweep under the carpet for what they believe is what actually happened Polygamy. Now, if you're one of those people who is apprehensive about the subject of polygamy, like maybe you don't understand it, you don't approve of it, um, to be honest, you are not alone. There are many people, both inside and outside the church, who don't quite understand polygamy and are not comfortable with it. In fact, I'll be honest with you, this is not one of my favorite subjects uh, to talk about because I just don't like the subject all that much, but I've seen so many misconceptions about polygamy regarding the LDS church that I knew it was important that I post a video about it. So here we go. Um, the shortest way to describe the LDS church and the practice of polygamy is by saying this, yes we did and no we don't. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the church history. Um, in the 1800s, polygamy was practiced in the LDS church because of what Mormons believe was a revelation given to the prophet Joseph Smith at the time. Now, it's interesting to note that in biblical times, polygamy was permitted to be practiced during some times, like with uh, Abraham or Jacob, but then in other times, it was not permitted, like in the New Testament days. But there really is no official reason um, that is described in the Bible, so we kind of take it on faith. So, how many of you are out there are going to, you know, say, okay, you're right. Holy smoke, she's right. They, it was, it was okay in biblical times, and you know, it was okay in the time of Abraham. So we're justified now. Did she clear it up? Does that make you feel any better about it? Because at the time of Joseph Smith, it wasn't accepted. So you can point to the Bible and say, uh, it's okay now. You could if you're a cult leader and the head of the cult. I think someone once said, it's good to be the king. Now, similarly, during the 19th century, for about a 50-year period, Mormons believed God commanded some Mormons to practice polygamy. And there were three reasons given specifically for that. Um, the first reason was an ancient practice needed to be restored in order to fulfill a prophecy. So that was the first reason given. Of course. An ancient practice needed to be put into place to restore a prophecy. Of course, yes, that's what it is. Go with it. The second reason was that God wanted to help jumpstart membership in the LDS church uh, because we believe that we're a restored church from ancient times and that he wanted to uh, create more members. And if there's more women who are married and having children, then there's more membership. So that was reason number two. Obviously, Joseph Smith looked over at the Quakers and said, you're doing it wrong. We need babies. No better way to keep a church going than indoctrinate its own. It, 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 you can't get people to join. What you do is you knock up a lot of people. 
you have the babies, you indoctrinate them, because once they're indoctrinated, they're faithful, they will stay in your church forever. That is how you build a religion. And if you're a Mormon, you know that you're told in the church to not marry outside the church. There's a reason for this. There is a reason. Regarding reason number three, Mormons believe that while you don't have to be married to go to the celestial kingdom, which is the highest kingdom of heaven, within that celestial kingdom, and you can find more information about that in my after death video, by the way, but within the celestial kingdom, there are varying degrees, and the top degree can only be obtained by those who are married. Polygamy allowed more women, specifically the opportunity to reach the highest kingdom, which anticipated a shortage of worthy men, I guess. So that was the third reason given. So, to get to the celestial, celestial kingdom, you need to be married. So, if you are on a boat full of women, and you get stranded in the middle of nowhere, and if your religion is Mormonism, you're fucked, okay? Unless you find a way to get married, which soon will might be rectified, maybe. Uh, the churches caved to everything else in the past, you know, for instance, they let blacks in and whatnot, and now they're letting gays in, uh, Boy Scouts and, and into the church. They might cave to marriage, maybe, of gays into the church. And if that's the case, well, then it doesn't matter if you're shipwrecked on a island with a bunch of the same sex. You can get married in... Go to the Celestial Kingdom too. Sounds like a plan. Let's keep going. Now, all that being said, I understand that it's still a little bit confusing. We don't have all the answers, and that's the truth. We really don't have all the reasons why polygamy was permitted uh, to be practiced in the LDS Church or in biblical times. But going back to church history, so in 1890, the commandment to practice polygamy in the LDS Church was lifted, and then in 1904, it was commanded by God to the prophet that polygamy no longer be practiced on this earth. So since then, polygamy is no longer a practice in the LDS Church. It was just during that about 50 year period in the 19th century you sneaky little bugger cutting stuff out in 1882 congress enacted the edmonds act which it made polygamy illegal now the problem with this is at the time utah keeps applying for statehood and it keeps getting turned down and they keep applying and people don't think that the Mormons are going to stop the polygamy thing. I see a revelation coming on here. Now, in 1890, President Woodrow Woodruff advised all LDS members to not participate in illegal marriages. And this is a move to, once again, go towards showing and say, hey, we're trying to become a state. Work with us here. Finally, in 1894, Congress set forth the Enabling Act, which was a step going towards Utah becoming a state. Okay. Uh, now, everything that this video is telling you about the church Dropping polygamy because of revelation is totally BS. The Mormons had America forming around them, and here they are, they need to be a state. How did they become a state? How did they get what they wanted? They had to drop polygamy. And the Mormons will forever probably try to push us under the car carpet, but you can research this, look it up, it's in our history books. We just don't look at it very closely. Now, you could even say that the quickest way to excommunication in the LDS Church is to begin practicing polygamy. You could even go further and say that today there is no such thing as a Mormon polygamist. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't exist. Now, the public, we've noticed, doesn't quite understand uh, these concepts. Um, in fact, according to Lawrence Research, 46% of Americans still believe that Mormons practice polygamy. 
which is interesting because that means that perhaps half of America believes that I will be one of multiple wives someday. Not on your life. I, first of all, am having trouble practicing monogamy right now, but practicing polygamy, no. If I find Mr. Right, or I should say when I find Mr. Right, uh, I ain't Sharon, not a chance. I am so grateful that polygamy has not been commanded to be practiced while I exist on this earth. And one day, if the Mormon church is true, you will be part of multiple wives. Although the Mormon church has dropped polygamy on earth, if you get married in the temple forever and you get married to a second wife, let's say the first wife dies, you get to keep both wives after you die. That's right. So, it depends on, I don't know, whatever floats your boat, but you can say that you're the only one but if there is life after death, which I don't really believe that there is, but I think it's funny, it would be funny to see that a second one, second wife shows up after your death. And uh, I guess the women can kind of fight it out. I just, that would be cool. Now, a lot of this confusion about Mormons practicing polygamy still, according to what people think, um, comes from the more than 150 groups that have branched off from the LDS Church, and some of them do still continue to practice polygamy. But these are not Mormons, even though some of them do read the Book of Mormon. Their names have been removed from church records, and they are within their own church. It's also interesting to note that there are about 80,000 people in the United States who practice polygamy, and about half of them claim Mormon or Origins. The others claim origins from some other source. TV and media also plays into this whole uh, misconception of polygamy and Mormons, like with shows like Big Love or Sister Wives that are associated with the state of Utah. And the state of Utah is clearly known for having a large Mormon population, so that association alone, in addition to other things in those shows, makes it seem like like Mormons today are linked to polygamy when they really aren't. So we're anxious to get that word out there, make sure people understand that Mormons don't practice polygamy anymore, but we did in the past. That is part of our history for sure. Before I close, I wanted to also address that I've received a few messages from people with a little bit of hateful terminology, I'll, I'll even say, saying that Joseph Smith, who Mormons believe was a prophet, um, was a sex-crazed scumbag who just wanted to marry a bunch of women in order to have sex with all these women. Now, um, I looked into this claim, as well as other people, other authors and such, to find out what the truth is, because let's be honest, none of us, the critics or us Mormons, were alive during the times of Joseph Smith, so we can go back to the records. And the evidence, as I've read and as other people have read, shows quite the opposite. In fact, new evidence has come out recently, and I'll include links in the video description, showing that Joseph Smith was more of a reluctant polygamist. He wasn't exactly thrilled about the idea of practicing polygamy, but God made it very clear um, a few times, actually, before he actually practiced polygamy, that that was what was going to need to happen. And so Joseph Smith agreed to do it because God is all-knowing and, and you follow God's advice, right? All right. Now she says she's going to give you evidence. She's not going to give you evidence. Um, you go back to her video and you go through those links and you can read over the links and what the links really turn out to be is Joseph Smith and other individuals saying, oh, I really didn't want to do this, uh, I, but the Lord commanded me to do it. I felt that it wasn't right, but I'm doing what I had to do. It's like sitting at a birthday party and saying, well, no one showed up. And, well, maybe they'll show up. They're kind of late. I'm going to have to eat this cake here. And, and I don't want to eat this cake, but I'm going to eat this cake because it's just the rational thing for me to do. And, and if they show up, I'm going to tell them I didn't mean, you know, I, I would have waited for you, but I assumed that after five minutes, no one was going to show up and I ate all the cake, but I didn't enjoy doing it. My gut hurts. I, I, I feel like I'm about to throw up. 
and I'm, you know, you really, you're, you don't know, you know, you should be grateful that I did this for you and that you didn't have to go through this mess. And that's what it goes through on the site. There's nothing, there's nothing that justifies Joseph Smith's actions. It just, him saying that I didn't want to do this and I'm pretty sure that they did the same thing at Waco or any other, you know, weird occult group that says that they didn't necessarily do it because they wanted to. It was because it was a requirement from, so anyhow. Right. Or commandments even. Uh, but Joseph Smith wasn't only just a reluctant polygamist, he treated his wives very kindly. In fact, Joseph Smith himself was martyred in his 30s, and even after that, his wives never said anything critical about him. They said he was a loving person, he genuinely cared about mankind, he wasn't this sex crazed maniac like people say. According to. Ever talk to a question, Christian about slavery? How, how the Bible was justifying the actions that the slave owners were doing back, you know, before the Civil War. And they said, well, you know, they, they did it, they treated their slaves good, okay? Being in, and, and they, all, they also refer back to the Bible saying they treated the slaves good. It wasn't really bad, it was, it was the way things were back there in slavery, then isn't like it was a slave is a slave, okay? And so they're trying to portray Joseph Smith as kind, loving, and we're getting away from the topic. Something that also the church isn't going to tell you if you do a little bit of research on this is that when I was when I was a child, I asked why why did why, why was the mob after Joseph Smith? Why were they trying to shoot him in Carthage jail? And they said, well, it's just because they didn't like the re religion. No, that's not why that they were after him in Carthage jail. It seemed to be that uh, a few of the individuals in the local area there were on to his polygamous acts and what they were about to do is they threatened that they were going to go to the local printing press and print out what Joseph Smith was doing. So Joseph got a bunch of his men and came over and totally destroyed the printing press. Now imagine something similar happening to this in modern day. Let's say someone comes into town or goes into the to your big city and takes out all your all your internet service, all your TV, all your newspapers, every form of media just totally wiped out, okay? And it probably might it might not be another year before you have any type of media in that town whatsoever. You're probably going to have a riot. Someone's going to want to figure out who this guy was, what the hell's wrong with him? and probably kick his ass. And something else that they don't tell you about when Joseph Smith got shot, I went to, to Nauvoo with my grandparents and and when I went to Carthage jail, they said they're beating them off. The only thing they had to fend off was like these canes or, and they pushed him out the window and shot going, shot going out the window. They didn't tell me, they didn't tell us that Joseph Smith, in his final hours, requested a bottle of wine up there because he was probably close to the end of whatever, and a three three bullet revolver. And Joseph Smith wasn't, you know, didn't go down without taking a few people. He killed two, wounded one, but. You know, that's another story. To the evidence. So if you have that opinion of Joseph Smith being this scumbag, I challenge you to click on the links that I've included in the video description, uh, do the research, and read the documentation that was written by those who knew him. Um, and then decide for yourself what that documentation means, because I have seen uh, quite the opposite. The people, in fact, really did think very highly of him um, and that he wasn't what people claim he is. If you want to take a deeper dive into the 
subject of polygamy, including the subject of polyandry, which is another subject that ha is filled with misconceptions and falsehoods. Uh, I have listed a number of resources in the video description. Videos, great books that have come out, and some of them very recent. In conclusion, I just wanted to say that I'm very happy that monogamy is the way to go. Uh, hopefully I'll get there someday. Yay, monogamy. Wow, cheese ball. Anyway, you heard it from the Mormon next door. Wow, you're right, cheese ball. And all the links that she gives you are the only are the the Mormon site links. So in order to the best way to find out what's wrong with another church is to ask another church. So if you want to know what's wrong with the Catholics, you got to ask the Mormons. If you want to ask to know what's wrong with the Mormons, you got to ask the Catholics. If you want to know what's wrong with the Catholics, you have to ask the Baptists. You and it, it's a big circle. There's there's a reason why churches try not to criticize each other too much because they know what's wrong with the other church, and they know that the other church knows what's wrong with their church. So if they speak too loud, they'll say something about them. Then they end up saying something about them, and it hurts business. So. I hope you learned something from today and I might review another one of these later because being ex-Mormon I think it's really funny how how vague they make their little they they bring out what they say is truth but it's just little bitty piece, pieces of it and I'll fill in the rest of blanks catch you guys later bye